Hello YouTube. Um, while making the video about the uh, Christian paraphernalia, I thought it might be a pretty cool idea to um, share some of my fairly sizable collection of Christian music. Growing up, I wasn't allowed to listen to anything other than uh, Christian music. So, um, my musical tastes were um, as mature, I guess, as you, you might expect them to be, you know, being limited to this kind of bubble. But um, I thought I'd share some of the artists that I liked. And uh, I'll do that in alphabetical order. And the interesting thing about this was, you know, I put some of my favorites into a spiral binder so I don't have the uh, jewel cases, so I'm just going to hold up the uh, cover art and uh, talk about them for a little bit. Let's see, Yolanda Adams. Um, this is the only album of hers that I really got into. And it seems to be uh, kind of critical consensus that uh, this is kind of her best one and had the most mainstream success. Um, Susan Ashton, you know, she was really, really popular in the early to mid 90s, and uh, then she tried to go country and that flopped horribly. Now, she's mostly known for some collaborations with uh, producer and songwriter Wayne Kirkpatrick. And uh, I thought they made some pretty good music. Uh, Avalon. They are a uh, kind of factory label made pop dance kind of group. They're really, really corny, but they're a little fun, at least, in their earlier years. Now, they've kind of been a revolving door of... Uh, cast members and uh, I think this was the second iteration already um, Margaret Becker she's really fallen off the map you know in the past uh, 12 years or so but I think that's you know mostly out of her own volition you know, she was really popular at one time you know probably second to Amy Grant in terms of popularity and uh, what kind of happened with her was earlier in her career she was kind of known as a rocker chick and then the label sort of morphed her into a pop princess and uh, this album in particular was a bit of a return to uh, her more introspective material so I still think that the production on this album in particular was quite unusual at the time and uh, probably wouldn't happen today Labels seem to have had a little more uh, creative leeway back then. Mm, Cadman's Call. You know, they're kind of a, another acoustic folk pop group. Uh, one of the members is going to show up again later. Now, if you're a fan of Christian music, you have to have heard of Stephen Curtis Chapman. Um, I don't know what happened to this album of his, but my favorite of his was probably uh, Signs of Life. You know, he's kind of known for music that's full of hooks. Uh, Ashley Cleveland. She has quite a unique, smoky, soulful voice. And, you know, she's kind of known for the blues blues rock and uh, her husband uh, his Kenny Greenberg he's a uh, Nashville session musician and he's extremely talented um, if you're a fan of Christian music in the 90s at least you would know who DC Talk is and uh, Jesus Freak was their most popular album but I like this one more because uh, this was I thought more musically diverse and now the big one A.B. Grant had quite a fixation on Amy Grant music. At one point, as a couple more examples may 
provide. Um, I actually don't like quite a bit of the music that she's come out with, but there's a couple albums of hers in particular that I thought of more organic production and more introspective songwriting, and this is one of them. Behind the Eyes is probably my favorite. Also, from Amy Grant, this is the other introspective, more organically produced kind of album. This Lead Me On, 20th Anniversary Edition. And uh, so this kind of illustrates the level of fanaticism. Uh, this is a, I think it's a UK CD single of Baby Baby. And it has about four different remixes of the song on it. Yeah. Um, this is an album that was supposed to come out on Sony Records about 10 years ago, and it never did, and I still really don't know why. In fact, I don't even remember how I got this. So hopefully you don't tell and uh, they ask for their album back. Uh, this was a former member of Avalon, who I had mentioned before.